Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. It's Tracy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make my new cowl. Now, this is more of a neck warmer type cowl. It fits not snugly around your neck. There is a, a sizable gap around my neck, but um, you can make this a lot longer so that you can have it more um, looser, or you can make it a little tighter so it's snug and you pull it up and it really sort of keeps your chin warm. This will stay up. Um, but this is, is still not tight around uh, neck and face. So this one, it measures, um, if you're just pulling it flat like this, it measures about 30, 31 centimetres or 12 inches, about a foot. Um, now I've made this with some really inexpensive yarn. I got this in Poundland. It is a super chunky. Um, there are thicker super chunkies. I think there's one that they also sell it in B&M, slightly thicker. But it's just this really lovely kind of fleck, chunky yarn. It's nice and soft. It's part of the Knitting Essentials. It's machine washable. These come in 50 grams and this took one and a half to make it this size. But as I said, you can, if you want, make it wider and make it an infinity scarf or you can actually don't um, join it at all and make it into a scarf and i'm going to show you how i add the fur now the fur is another one of the inexpensive yarns i don't know why this is moving bear with me a sec going the wrong way um one of the inexpensive yarns i bought recently uh from b m and it's by trim called feather touch and it's just quite shaggy where's the end there we go it's like one of the eyelash yarns but it is really really fluffy and furry and a lot of people don't like to work with fur yarns they find it hard but this is ever so easy and i'll show you the technique that i used um and if you didn't want to do that you could actually just sew it through so i'll show you how i did it anyway now i've made it into a kind of a ribbed style that just that was a, a piece I'd cut off and it was bugging me a little bit, so it uh, fell off now. Um, there is my join, and as you can see, it's not the most visible of joins that'd be around the back of my neck in any case, so it wouldn't really bother me so much. So, um, I've used to make this a eight millimeter crochet hook. And I know a lot of people for Super Chunky would maybe use a 10, but I wanted it to be a fairly, I want to say stiff, but it is drapey. But I wanted it to stand up on itself so that it would be a neck warmer, not something that collapses right down on itself. So I used a smaller hook. Um, plus, as I say, there are thicker Super Chunkies out there. So I'm going to show you how I made it and open my first ball. You can use any super chunky, any chunky yarn. Um, all you need to do in that respect is to um, adjust your crochet hook size and um, your chain. So for this, I'm just going to make a slip knot. Now, hopefully this isn't gonna keep traveling. I'll have to keep my eye on that. You make a slip knot however you normally do. That's how I do it. Slip for some reason out of my grasp. There we are. Right, so I have my slip knot and I'm going to chain a total of 60, six zero. So obviously a chain is just to yarn over and pull through. You don't want them tight. You want them fairly, I wouldn't say baggy, just loose. Um, this is a knit pro hook. I've not used it before. I was going to use one of my new hooks that I want to review, but um, they tend to have quite a bulbous hook, which makes it hard, I think, to do the chain. It just feels like it pops through. So I'm gonna do 60 chain, as I said. So I'm gonna pause the video and get up to 60 because there's nothing worse when you're trying to count when someone else is also counting, and plus it's boring watching me make 60 chain. So I'll pause it now and come back to you once I have them. Okay, so I have my 60 chain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way along, trying to keep it 
completely straight because we're going to make a ring. If you find that it's always hard for you to do, then what you can do is just do your first row and join that. So now I'm going to make sure this tail is at the bottom and insert my hook into that first one. And I'm going to join it with a slip stitch. So that's just pulling that yarn through both of those loops. Now I'm going to do one chain and cinch it right down so that chain doesn't count. So I'm going to go into this same stitch. I'm going to pull my loop a little looser because cinching it down did tighten it. And I'm going to do a UK double crochet, which is a single crochet in the US. So just yarn in, pull up a loop, two loops, yarn over, pull through both of them. And I'm going to do that in every single one of these chains exactly the same and it's a very simple round um, just watch you don't twist it is easy to do but it is it shouldn't you know it should be easy to get out of because if you've traced it all the way along and joined your ring it shouldn't twist it just can have that illusion sometimes you just need to make sure it's in the right right place and if that happens when i get to the end i will show you so that is all we're doing in every single one of the chain. We're just inserting yarn over two loops, yarn over, pull through both. So that's all we're doing all the way along, which is a very simple and easy stitch. So I'm going to pause the video because, again, I don't want you to be bored watching me do this whole round of a UK double, which is a single crochet, remember, in the US. And I'll catch up with you when I get almost back um, to the start. Right, so I'm getting back and this is what I mean. It looks like it's twisted, but it really, it really hasn't. Just trace it along. And then when you get to this part, you'll see it's it's not twisted at all. It just has that look that it is twisted, but it really, it really isn't. As long as that is at the bottom and we just keep a hold of it now and then it should be fine. So we're just going to carry on one in each of our 60 chain. Now with mine, I showed you, I did have two kind of rows of fur. Now, where I've placed that row of fur, you might not want to keep it in the same place. And um, I will show you what I mean. Now, this is my, this is my cowl. And as I've got it on and I pull it up um, so that it's snug against my mouth, if I want to really pull my collar up, I'm going to get this in my mouth. So if you wanted to, you could do one in the middle and one at the bottom, or you could just do a couple in the middle. You could do whatever you want, really. But I don't really pull it up over my face as such. So I decided on my two rows, you can keep it the same as mine. But I will, then I will show you what we do when we do this row and you can decide where you want to put them. So, okay, we're all the way back. Now our tail is at the bottom. And so this is our first stitch. And I'm going to go into the back loop only and do a slip stitch. And there's a reason for that. To get this rib, I'm going to do one chain, cinch it down. So this again is our first stitch. So I'm not, I don't want a tight loop. I'm gonna go in that back loop only and do my stitch and that's my first. So now I'm going to go in the back loop of every stitch that's what makes this rib effect. So every single one into the back loop only. So you're just going in that one. And we're going to carry on. It's exactly the same stitch, just in the back loops. And we're going to go all the way round, just through the back loops. And it makes this little ridge, you can see it forming. Now when you're working it, it does look like it's pulling big gaping holes. But as you work across, they close and tighten up. It's ever so simple this. It's 
there's not a great deal of difference in in the stitches for the whole thing the only difference being the furry rows or pre preparation for the furry rows i originally was going to have three fur rows and the middle one was going to be a different color i have a kind of a, a butterscotch one and i was going to put it along here so that it broke these two and i had one kind of butterscotch in the middle but i figured you wouldn't see much of the ribbon if i did that so because they bush up so i just left it at the two <clears throat> so i'm going to pause the video because as i say it is all the same all the way along just make sure you've still got your 60 stitches at the end of the row um but it's one in each of every back loop and that's easy to see you can see the front there and the back it's nice big stitches so you can easily spot them okay so i'm going to pause it and i shall catch up with you when i get back to my start okay so i've made it all the way back and here i am again there's my first stitch so i'm going to just slip stitch again into the back loop and do my chain and cinch it right down so now i'm going to make a preparation for my furry um row now i as i say i chose to have it that close to my start um if you were making this and you didn't want it around your face, like around your mouth, then it would be the last one that you need to skip or put it in um, further down around the middle, maybe. So that's the one you need to decide on. Um, but the bottom one, that's fairly at the bottom. So I did two rows and then I did my preparation for my furry row. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go into the first stitch as normal and do a UK treble us single and we're going to do a chain we're going to skip one and go into the back loop of the next stitch chain one skip one and then go into the back loop of the next stitch so we're kind of making holes they do close up so they're, they're not gaping but chain one skip one into the black loop of the next stitch and we're going to do that all the way around and skip one in the back loop and that's very simple all the way around that's all we're going to do and what we're going to do then is this is where we're going to use our furry row and i'll show you that at the end it's ever so simple you can if you want just weave it through like sew it but i like my way it's it's not too difficult it's easy to master so skip one and one through the back loop and we're just going to do that all the way around so yet again i shall pause the video because it's all the same skip one and come back to you when i get back to the start right so i've made it all the way back around finishing on a one chain that way i've got exactly the same stitch count and i'm going to go into my very first stitch back loop and do my slip stitch and do my chain cinch it down now we're going to go back to get our stitches as we had them before so in that first stitch as it was a back loop anyway and we're going to go through the back loop of the chain that we made back loop of the stitch there's our chain between into the back loop so we're just putting it back the way it was all the way around it's a very simple stitch but i like the way that this rib looks it i kind of think it looks quite fetching especially in this super chunky i knew i'd find a use for this yarn okay so that is all i'm doing through the back loop of every stitch and every chain all the way around make sure at the end of the row you still have your your 60 stitches i'm going to pause it and i'll catch up with you when i get back to the start right so i've made it all the way around again now between my two fluffy rows i have eight rows so that was my first so now what we want to do is make a slip stitch to join as usual 
chain and cinch it down and I'm going to do seven more rows. So I'm going to not show you the seven rows because they're all the same as this previous row. Going through the back loops, 60 stitches and um, once I've done the next seven rows, um, I will come back to you. So go ahead and make seven more rows. Incidentally, if you wanted it bigger, and I don't, um, if you wanted it longer, that's fine. Um, your stitch count can be whatever you want it to be. But if you wanted it taller, you just, obviously you can put more rows in, you can put more fluffy rows in. Um, it, it really is up to you. Um, but I have a total of 12 rows. So I have eight and two each side of my furry rows. Well, so that's, the furry row is part of it still. So I think it's like 12 rows. One, two, eight, no, 14 rows, isn't it? With my furry ones. So um, in that respect, you can put in as many rows as you want to. Um, you can make it much, much bigger, pull it up and use it as a snood if you want. I've not done that with a chunky yarn like this, and I don't know how that would bunch around the neck area. So, you know, it really is whatever you want to do with it. But I decided that I just wanted kind of a neck warmer type cowl uh, for this particular one. So I'm gonna pause it then, and I'll come back to you once I've done my remaining seven rows. Okay, so here we are, I've done that. And I'm going to do another um, row to make a fluffy edge. Remember, you don't have to do this one if you don't want it to be kind of where your mouth will be. So again, it's one stitch, one chain, skip one, into the next one, back loop, one chain, skip one, into the back loop of the next. And it's again exactly the same as we did before, all the way around. Skip one. Okay, so you've seen that before. I'm going to pause it then and I'll catch up with you once I get back to the start. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. I'm going to join my slip, well, finish with my one chain, join again with that slip stitch and do my chain, cinch it down. And now I'm going to go into that same stitch again. And we're going to do into the chain as well, the back loop, and we're going to carry on just like we did after the first time we did this row. But for this, this is going to be my first row. And then I'm going to do one more. So it, just as we had two rows before our holy row, we have two rows after. So this is um, the second to last row. So I'm going to do this one and one more only, and then I'm finished. But um, like I said to you, it really is your personal preference on how wide you want it to be. So just going in the back loop of the chain, back loop of the stitch, all the way around, I'll pause it then and catch up with you again once I've got all the way around. Okay, so I've made it all the way around. Going to join with a slip stitch into the back loop, just as we do all through this. One chain, cinch it down, and this is going to be my last row of going in the back loop of every single stitch all the way around. So uh, I'm gonna pause that then um, I got, don't forget to go in the first stitch as always and I'm going to go in each one this is the last row so once we get to the end of this one we're just going to end off with this particular yarn so I'm going to pause it then and catch up with you when I've got all the way around okay so I finally made it all the way around so I'm just going to um, slip stitch into my beginning well, it's hard to get into that one pull it tighter i'm going to cut off a nice long tail and just end off that will be sewn in so it will be invisible so don't worry about that 
So now we've got the fur. And I know everybody is the bit that everybody dreads. So this was the other fur that I considered using. It's Sergar Alpine. Comes in a 50 gram ball. And this is called Lynx. So I did toy with this one because it is a little bit more of a... Well, it's a more finer fur, but it's um, more of a, a butterscotch kind of colour. I thought it might look nice, but I decided against it and just to go with the, the trim, which was the same colour after all. And um, then I haven't got the worry that it might not be a perfect colour match. So, here we go. Let's just clear that other yarn out of the way for a second because I don't want it to tangle. And we'll get this one out. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever done this before, but you will need, obviously, a, a darning needle at the end of this. So what I do is I go to my rear, to my join. So this here is my row that is purely for my fur row. So... I'm going to keep the tail on the inside and pull up a loop. Now, make sure you've got a nice long tail and keep it well out of the way, and this one, because there is a tendency to pull them through. So now we're just going to look and go into our first space, yarn over and pull it through. Pull it through a ways, because otherwise you have to pull loads out. So then we go into the next one there yarn over and pull it through pull it back on itself and down again and it keeps it fluffy and again we go into the next one see it's so simple we're just making a chain through the work and i did this kind of technique on um a gift bag or hot water bottle cover that i made last christmas there is a tutorial for it but it's, it's so simple and yet it's really effective. So if you pull it up and then back, you don't have to spend ages pulling the yarn through, which I didn't do the first time round. So into the next one, yarn up. You can see that under here, I'm just yarning over and pulling it through. Sorry, just hit the camera. So yeah, that's all there is to it, all the way, all the way to the end. But you've just got to make sure but this is the one you've come out of, so you're going into that one next. Not the same one, obviously, so we're getting a tangle. But it is really that simple. Make sure you pull it out and back on itself, and it keeps the fluff nice and perky. And you haven't got to go trying to drag it through. So you can quite clearly see how easy it is. So as long as you make sure that you keep this back and this back, it won't come through. Otherwise, you can get in a bit of a knot. That happened to me yesterday. I learnt the hard way to keep it back. But that's as simple as it is. Just pulling it through, make sure you pull it up and back on itself. And it does all the work for you. And isn't that simple? See, I told you it would be simple. Pull it through, through the loop. Pull it up and back on itself. All the way round. So... I'm sure you've got that now, but I will do a couple more with you. So this one we've been in, we're going in that one. And pull it through and through the loop. On your hook, pull it up and back. See, ever so simple. I'm only doing it through one, then the other to show you. You can just pull it straight through. It's nice and easy. So it's simple as that. How about that? So we're going to do it all the way around. So I'm going to pause it because you've seen me do it quite a lot now. And if you want to re-watch it, you can always rewind it a little bit. So I'm going to go all the way around and then I'm going to come back to you when I get back to the start again. Okay, so I've made it all the way around. Now this is probably the trickiest part. I'm going to pull up this big loop and I'm going to go in to my next stitch along, you might have to part your fluff and I'm going to bring that loop through and in. 
Okay, so now I'm going to cut this yarn. Nice big tail. This is where I got fluff from before. Okay, and I'm going to pull it all the way, pull that loop all the way through. So now both, turn it in the other way. I've got both ends and I'm going to tie that in a double knot because I worry about things coming undone. So that's now in a double knot and all I have to do is sew these ends in on this wrong side and you can very easily work it across and then sew this end in as well. But before I do, I'm going to make that one a bit shorter because I did go a bit over the top with my um, length of that one. I'm going to do the same again for the other side. And there we go. So we have two furry sides. Now, if you wanted to, as I say, you could have done it in the middle. You could have done anything you want, but I decided to keep mine the same as the previous one. So I'm going to do that, that whole thing all over again on this, this top section. So you see me do it once, I'm going to pause it and I'll come back to you when that's all done and dusted. Okay, so I've made it both way round and this is the right way, put all the ends on the inside and you can see both of my furry bits are done and it's all finished. All that remains is to sew the ends in and they may look daunting but this actual stuff that part there is the thickness and it it really does go in to the needle i'll show you if you just double it up and you can push it in with your thumb really easily look at that it threadles easier than the super chunky and it is ever so simple just to work your way along this fluffy row and bury it it's ever so easy to do. So, and it doesn't come back out again. And when you cut off the end, you can leave a bit because it's just fluffy, isn't it? So, you don't have to get too close. There we go, that's one. And this, if I want to put this in my darning needle, I just twist it so it becomes thinner. And then, I somehow managed to poke it in to my darning needle with my thumbnail. And then we can go along. This is the rear, the back view. So we can just try and bury this one along this row. And I always go one way. Pull it so that I can't see anything from the top. And then I'll, I can't thread it first but I need to make sure that I'm going back the other way and it's not visible. Where's that one? There we go. Go there. And now I just pop it back in. Sorry, pop it back into my darning needle. Now it's all traced through. And then I'll pull it the other way through my work. And there's only a little bit then to just snip off carefully. There we go. So now I've just got to do this end, these two, and my first one. And that is all done. So, and it's so easy to do it that way with the fur. Anyone could do it, seriously. I know a lot of people are put off by working with furry yarns, but... There are ways. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And you'll be informed when there are new videos. And, um, well, let me know what you think. Thank you very much. And as I said to you before, you can play with this. You can make it much, much wider. You can make it deeper. You can put the fur in the middle and the end. You can do what you want, really, so that it doesn't go in your mouth if you want to pull it up you can make it into a snood all sorts of things so uh, or just a plain scarf if you made it longer you could still use the, put the fur through exactly the same way or if you wanted to you could just thread it up and do it as a running stitch but wouldn't look quite as bushy and tufty as it does 
by doing it that way. So hope you like that. Thank you very much for watching and uh, bye-bye for now. See you on the next one.